the topic of discussion for this session will be the revolution of ICT, Internet of Things. Uh, so enjoy the session. I now call upon Professor Sifati sir to take over the dais for the session. Thank you and over to you. saying that the foundations of uh, computing were set by Alan Turing in 36. We had the advent of the first computers in 45. And then in the 70s, information systems. And uh, we have this phenomenon of convergence between computing and telecommunication that opened the way <coughs> for the web and uh, the information society. Around the year 2000, we have uh, uh, we talk about embedded systems. So embedded systems are systems where computers interact continuously with some environment. And then uh, we talk about the Internet of Things. And the Internet of Things is a kind of, um, okay, combines uh, embedded systems and the Internet. And of course, we know also that we are talking about cloud, cloud computing, and things like that. Okay, now today, we have uh, <coughs> deployed over the planet billions of devices that are smart devices. And uh, the problem is how to interconnect these devices to produce services, to produce services, various services, and automated services. So this is the idea behind. So you have uh, a device that is, uh, say, uh, refrigerator, a car, an aircraft, and you want to integrate all the services, okay? And you have a further integration of services, and uh, that's uh, the technological dream that uh, is about, uh, uh, 
okay, uh, the Internet of Things. Now, there is a phenomenon that is called technological convergence, and this is, should be of interest to you engineers. What is technological convergence? Technological convergence means that we are using computers to integrate, to unify structures. So first of all, we would want to have a unified networking structure. So today you have uh, different types of networks. And you want to have unified networking structures. Uh, you have uh, integration of uh, uh, devices. So uh, typically, uh, your mobile phone, now you use it, of course, to give uh, phone calls, but you use it also to have many other services, okay? So this integration of, of, of services and devices. And then what is very important is that you have convergence of policies. This is very important. Convergence of policies means that we, for each economic sector now, we try to integrate activities and the governments, institutions, agree on standards about how to integrate activities. And thus, this is something very important. It's seamless, of course, people don't see it, but this is very important. The harmonization uh, by using standards to regulate the content of messages, the quality of service of different devices, and uh, to enable uh, pervasiveness of technologies. So we have this movement that is called uh, technological convergence. And let me give you some examples about how the big companies have been transformed over the years, uh, over the past 10 years. So you have a company like IBM. IBM, uh, 10 years ago, they were selling just machines and software. And suddenly they say, well, uh, we care about uh, making the planet more smart. Okay, come on, why IBM is interested in making the planet, uh, to build a smarter planet? So they say we can do that because the planet is instrumented. Instrumented means that you have sensors everywhere. You can measure, sense, okay, everything, collect information. So this is one idea. The other idea is that it's interconnected. Not only you can measure everywhere on the planet, but then you can collect the information, bring it okay, to some central uh, computers, to the cloud. Okay? And the most important, and this is something I will try to explain, it should be intelligent. So what is intelligence? Intelligence is a buzzword we use to uh, talk about how we can solve problems we don't know how to address, okay? I mean, intelligence, in principle, allows you to more predictability, allows you to manage resources. You know that today a problem of the planet is how to better manage resources, how to manage uh, uh, resources, how to manage energy, how to manage water, okay? And uh, uh, the IoT, the Internet of Things, will provide this intelligence okay, to manage resources. Uh, so the intelligence means predictability. You understand the term predictability? That we, it will be possible to predict that something will happen, okay, so to manage better the resource for that and to optimize the resource. So these are, and this is a, a challenge at IBM uh, five, six years ago. They started this program. And then you have also some interesting movement. Google, that used to be a company uh, selling services, I mean, providing services uh, uh, at the internet. And suddenly, they buy Motorola Mobility, so they're interested in mobile telecommunications. And uh, almost at the same time, Microsoft, they bought Nokia, which used to be a big uh, company, European company. Uh, and uh, then you have that uh, Google, oh, oh yes, okay, Google sells, uh, sells Motorola Mobility to Lenovo, right, which is a Chinese company. Have you seen this? Google, they buy Motorola Mobility for 12.5 billion, and then they sell it back to Lenovo. What's the difference here? Billions, eh? 
why they sent it back to Lenovo, a Chinese company? They are stupid. So what this title does not say is that they have, uh, they, they did not sell all the IPs. You know what are the IPs? IPs? What is IP? Intellectual properties. All the patents. So they sold the company without the IPs. All the, okay? Because the American government did not allow them to do it. And then you have Google that acquires a digital thermostat and smoke detector maker, Nest. For, uh, this was a small company for 3.2 billion. Okay, so why Google are interested in thermostats? Somebody can tell me why Google are interested in thermostats. Yeah? Smart homes, okay? Because you want to connect the thermostats to the internet, smart homes, okay? And then you have, uh, I don't know, I mean, so you have a restructuring. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that we had the software companies that now become big players, global players, and, uh, and uh, they become the key players in the new economy. Okay? And that's the new phenomenon. And that's really impressive. So you see, this is uh, from uh, an article in the Time magazine three years ago. They analyze the Google universe. So as I said, Google universe, uh, Google was just offering uh, uh, services at the internet. And now if you see the analyze this picture, you will see that you find energy here. You find, of course, the famous Google cars, okay, car autonomous cars. You, you find a lot of activities around medical, around uh, on medical here, around space, whatever, and uh, these guys are very ambitious. You can see that the ambition, the ambition have, have no limits. Okay, you can see if you have plenty of money, okay, you can uh, you can have uh, uh, great ambitions, of course. And then, of course, you have other people who have ambitions, and uh, so you have many, many. Many companies now that play play an important role in this uh, in this revolution. Okay, and this is Chinese company Huawei. Uh, that, that, uh, impressive development over the past years. Very very impressive development over the past years. Okay, so what is the Internet? So what is the Internet of Things? So what's the basic idea behind the Internet of Things? I think it has been explained by this slide of IBM. You have devices everywhere. You have embedded computers. You have uh, sensors and actuators. Then you collect information. So you have a kind of neural system. Of course, you have a variety of networks. The integration is not yet completely uh, accomplished. And then you collect this information. You send it to the cloud. And the cloud, you make analysis, data analytics, and things like that. Okay, and then. This provides the intelligence, and you send back orders to all these devices to manage people, to manage resources in the best possible manner. Is the image clear? So what I say here is uh, that IoT, uh, billions of smart connected things, a sort of universal global neural network in the cloud. Okay, and uh, this is the image. And I would like to analyze a bit this slide. So, for instance, people talk about smart energy, and you heard probably about smart energy. What is smart energy? Somebody can explain this, what it means smart energy or smart grid. So the idea is that today you have different sources of production of energy. You have uh, solar energy, you have uh, energy from dams, from nuclear plants, etc. These sources have different characteristics. For instance, if the weather is fine, you have a lot of sun, and you are producing your photovoltaic uh, plants, are producing a lot of energy, you should shut down some other, okay. And uh, now we want to design to grids a 
electric grids at the level of a continent. So let me talk about the European grid. So the idea in the European grid is that if, for instance, in the south of Europe, say you have two countries, Greece and Spain, okay, they are producing energy because of good weather, and they can they can make offer to say now I sell uh, electric energy at this rate, and uh, so there is a broker in the network that will buy from taking the best offer, okay, and this will be done in real time, okay. So you will have a system that will you will have producers and consumers of energy everywhere in Europe. And the system will automatically buy energy. So you have people offering energy and people consuming energy. And the guy who offers energy can be in Greece and the consumer can be in Germany. OK, no problem. Now, if you are an electrical engineer, I don't know how many of you are electrical engineers, but you know that. Uh, energy distribution is a problem. I mean, you may have stability problems if, uh, uh, I mean, to manage energy distribution, okay, it's, uh, it's and then as a theoretical problem, it's, it's a hard problem. Uh, so you should have to be very careful when you do that in real time, especially you have requirements on the reliability of the system. Uh, now, uh, smart factories. I'll talk later about smart factories, but the idea is that we will extend the, th the idea of 3D printing. I'll talk about that. You will, will have uh, smart uh, highways. Already we have smart highways. Highways with specific and uh, to monitor uh, the traffic and to give uh, guidelines, instructions to the drivers depending on, uh, okay, on problems that may appear of different nature. And of course, you've heard about smart homes and also uh, cars, but also uh, you have a lot of applications in smart farming and smart ag agriculture, management of water uh, by using sensors. And then uh, in medicine also, you see this guy here is ingesting a, a, a small pill and uh, as the pill goes through the tubes, it takes measurements of different parameters of the body and sends it to the hospital or to your medical doctor. Okay? You don't need uh, to pass any I mean, uh, analysis. I mean, to go to the hospital or whatever. To... OK, so that's the vision. Now, let's see this from a more technical point of view, what it means, the Internet of Things. In fact, there is no. Internet of Things. There are two different uh, ideas of Internet of Things. One is what people call now the human Internet of Things. What is the human Internet of Things? Some reason. Okay. So the human Internet of Things here is. Uh, an improvement of uh, the internet as you know it together today. That is, people uh, have this standard client server model. I am a client and I need a service. So I find a service and uh, it's a model that is interactive. Okay? But uh, the idea is to make it more intelligent, have uh, automated uh, services you can uh, in the future. Uh, Internet of Things, inter, uh, human Internet of Things, uh, formulate questions uh, that computers understand. I will talk about that. But the other that is uh, really challenging is uh, the industrial Internet of Things. So what's the industrial Internet of Things? It's about automation of, uh, of services. Automation without human in the loop. So the idea is that here, this is the important word, that we will have autonomous, autonomous processes. And uh, typically, for instance, if you have, say, self-driving cars, you have autonomous processes. Okay. Uh, if you have automated uh, 
So smart grid is completely autonomous because no human can manage this. Uh, so you understand that autonomy imposes some extra requirements. If the system is autonomous, this means that it will work without human intervention. Humans may intervene to change some parameters, but okay, the whole process will be automated. And you understand that autonomous systems are critical. Critical because, I mean, if there is a war, okay, uh, as humans cannot immediately intervene, if they are fast processes, okay, you can have uh, different types of casualties. So that's the challenging thing, in my opinion, and that's the key issue. All the companies today talk about autonomy, okay, how to make the world more autonomous. Because if you have humans, uh, of course, you have a better control, perhaps, of what happens, but you will slow down the processes. And uh, you probably know also that even in uh, now in stock exchange, you have robots to do that. Okay, no human operators, but robots decide about the transactions. Okay, people are looking for for efficiency. Okay, so uh, now it's clear that. The internet, as it is today, does not allow this vision, the autonomous uh, the industrial internet of things. Somebody can tell me why? Why with the current technology uh, we uh, cannot have uh, autonomous, I mean, it's, it's hard to, to, to have autonomous services through the internet. So autonomy means that you have a closed loop, okay? So why? Yes, but what it means, I mean, uh, one problem is that the infrastructure is not reliable enough. So if you have an autonomous system, if you have a human in the loop, so I make a request, then if something goes wrong, okay, I can wait. If now it's an industrial pro process that is starting and you want to control it, you should have, first of all, guaranteed response times. And today in the internet, you don't have guaranteed response time. Okay. So let me give you an example. Today, from any mobile phone, you can uh, watch what happens in your apartment because the, you can have cameras in your apartment. The cameras have an IP number. It's connected to the internet, and you can watch what happens. Okay, so this is trivial to do today. But what is less trivial is that you give orders to devices of your home through your mobile phone. Why this may be dangerous? Because if I give an order to start uh, hitting something, for instance, then it should make sure that the order is well transmitted there. And if I decide for some reason something happens and I change my mind, I should, uh, within guaranteed response time, be able to uh, reverse, or, I mean to change the order. And this is not possible. I mean, this is not guaranteed by, by the internet. So there are two problems. Somebody, and this you know, that there are security problems today in the internet, okay? So uh, today this is, uh, this is not reachable. And there is a movement in the US to build an industrial internet of things, the industrial internet consortium. This is a big consortium led by a company he has a vision about the Internet of Things and it's uh, General Electric. And uh, you, can, uh, you can visit their site. So they started this uh, four or five years ago. They announced that they have uh, some ideas about uh, how to build this new kind of Internet. Uh, one idea that is important in their approach is uh, what they uh, 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 Call time predictability, time predictability, so to have guaranteed the response times. 
but uh, I don't, did not see any, any results so far. And I don't think that I mean, it's very hard to redevelop uh, a new internet. So this is a slide from General Electric that illustrates the idea. You have here, say, some appliance, and uh, you monitor, you extract the data, and you store them in some uh, database, industrial database. You make some analysis here. So this is the big data analytics, this is the intelligent part. You make some decisions and you feed them back to the physical and human network and then and then the, the, the appliance. So here you have a closed loop, but I don't think that uh, this is uh, reachable today and uh, it will take some, some decades perhaps to do something in that direction. So, so far I have explained the, the phenomenon of uh, technological convergence and also the, the technical vision around the Internet of Things. Do you have any comments, any questions about that? Yes. Okay, that's a good question. Yes, there, is this, there are discussions. I've seen some documents, and one uh, document is, one idea is to have a kind of timed Ethernet, timed Ethernet, as the basic protocol. But you see timed Ethernet is very, very different from the IP protocol that we have currently in the internet, okay? I don't know how the two can be married, okay? Uh, they, they, I think that this endeavor is impossible unless you undo everything and you restart. Uh, what they call uh, the industrial internet of things will be probably extending the local area network, but it will, you will not have the industrial internet of things at planetary manner. This is just uh, just just an illusion. This is just uh, I don't believe uh, this. We'll see. But for the moment, they have meetings. And they don't produce anything. So. But it's interesting to see. You have this phenomenon because some companies, they, they have commercial arguments to do that, okay? And all the story also about artificial intelligence, I, I will discuss this. So they are anticipating, say, we will be doing this, and this attracts a lot, perhaps, of uh, credibility, or I don't know, okay? And, uh, uh, but but uh, uh, bottom line, I think, I think there is a lot of hype. So, uh, other questions, other comments? Okay. Yes? Uh, so in the previous slide, you had big data analytics, right? Yes. Yeah. So in the previous slide, when you had big data analytics, yes. uh, big data analytics basically involves a lot of get data getting together. Yes. So when you get a lot of data together, don't you think it's uh, some problem, uh, sort of security problem? Uh, some people might misuse it. Yes. So, IoT has, uh, don't you think that people will be left out in this process? There might not be more human uh, jobs for humans if you get more of automation in it. No, what's the question? Yes, I agree. Yes. 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 So, what do you propose? Uh, is automation better in your ways, or I mean, what do you feel? Automation is better, or it's. I think automation is better for efficiency reasons. So, if I can automate everything, okay. But if I can not automate, is a huge issue today. And this is the company's responsibility because they have developed systems that are not very well engineered. That's another problem. Okay? But security is a huge issue today. And I think that if we cannot, and I don't see uh, how we cannot uh, cope with cybercrime today. Okay? Uh, but uh, of course, this is, uh, this is science, this is technology. Uh, it's not hopeless, but it will take some time, probably. I mean, I don't share the optimism of other people uh, about the possibilities to overcome these difficulties in, uh, in some uh, near future. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to discuss about the technical uh, and scientific challenges. And the first challenge is how to design systems that are correct. Now, here, uh, usually, I have audiences uh, of scientists and computer scientists are familiar with software development and uh, okay 
so software development is very different from system development. But as you are engineers, you understand this. Design is about developing an artifact. So here the, ar the artifact is uh, an Apple Pie, OK? But it can be a building, or it can be a computer, or it can be a, OK? But for me, a system is uh, something that it's not only software. It's software with uh, the computer, with the hardware, OK? So uh, when you build an artifact, here I'm considering the case of an Apple Pie, you start from the desires, from the requirements that you have here. And then these are just the desires, is uh, just, just uh, wishful thinking, just the thoughts about what you want. And then somebody writes a recipe, a program, says you will do that, 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 and you get to prepare a pie. And then there is another important step that is materialization. I have the recipe. And for the same recipe, I can use different types of, of uh, ingredients here. Okay, these are the resources. But you can apply the same type of reasoning for a house. Okay, I want to uh, that somebody build the house for me. I have my requirements. I find a single engineer. I explain. I want the house like that, like that, like that. Then the civil engineer will uh, give the recipe. The recipe will be. The blueprint, OK? And then uh, another choice is, OK, what, okay, what quality of materials I will be using to build, uh, to build the, really the house. Okay. So here you have two serious problems. One is to go from the requirements to the recipe. And the other is, and this is a matter of money, how much it will cost. Because here uh, the quality of the resources I will be using is important, OK? So when I build a system, and now when I build a system with uh, computers, so you start from requirements, see here on the left. Then you write, say, an application software. And this is, uh, this is uh, executable. This is declarative, OK? This is not, and this is code. And then you generate here the system is the implementation. It's hardware plus software. Now, the important question when you are doing this is whether what you are doing is correct. What you get, finally, is what you have dreamed of. Huh? So this is the important issue of correctness. Can we build systems that are correct, that meet our expectations? That's the key issue. Do we have theory to do that? How much theory we have to do that? And this is the key problem of the Internet of Things. Can we build the systems that, OK, with automated processes, as, as I explained? So the concept of correctness as an engineer, how we understand it, the concept of correctness. It has two aspects, the concept of correctness. One is what people call transworthiness. What does it mean that my system is transworthy? It means that it will behave as I expect, I expect it, OK? Uh, despite of uh, many different mishaps that can occur over the life of the system. What kind of mishaps can occur? So hardware failures, because the hardware is, uh, may have problems of aging, for instance, and may fail after a while. And then, of course, you may have problems of design. So do you make the difference between uh, hardware failures and design errors? Who makes the difference between hardware failures and design errors? Do you make the difference? Do you understand what's the difference? Yes? No. See the difference? Hardware means that hardware uh, failure means that yes, hardware. While design error is that you the programmer made an error, okay? Or you so this is a, an error of your mind, nothing to do with problems of 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 hardware, okay? 
And then you can have also problems from this interaction with the environment. And of course, you can have the famous security issue, okay? Because it's security is the human environment. And then it has, uh, okay, uh, is uh, doing some malevolent action, okay? So these are all these aspects. When I design a system, I have to think about. And this is the transworthiness uh, issue, okay? And this is not a simple, I mean, it's not as simple as writing just code, okay, for those of you who are programmers. And then, of course, if you tell me, well, uh, or I tell you, I can build a system that is very, very transworthy. But if it costs a lot of money, and it happened to me, okay? So uh, sometimes I design systems that costed a lot of money, okay? And uh, if it's a mobile phone, okay, transworthiness need not be uh, too high, okay? Just, uh, just enough. So the other issue that appears is, sorry. Is, uh, is optimization. So you should, uh, so when you are an engineer, you care about transportless, but you care about optimization. Not to use too many resources, and this is something uh, perhaps you understand if you are an engineer. Uh, you use just the resources that are enough to ensure the degree, some degree of transportless. Strange problem, I mean, if you are an electrical engineer, you don't have this, this problem, okay? But in computing systems, you have this problem because transworthiness costs a lot. Why transworthiness costs a lot? Because we don't have theory to build systems. Uh, so how you make a system transworthy? Typically, I have worked with avionic systems. With Airbus, we have uh, done a lot of work on that. And to make a computing, a flight controller, more reliable, you duplicate or you triplicate the computers, okay? This costs a lot of money. You cannot do that in any system. Triplicate the computers will consume more energy, okay? So you see, you can, there are theories about how to make systems transworthy, but on the other hand, you have to pay a lot. So when you are designing systems today, you have to find the good trade-offs between uh, Transworthiness and optimization is what I'm saying clear. Yes, okay. So today we have. Uh